Take it from someone who's been there, making dumb, questionable decisions in men has nothing to do with your intelligence and everything to do with your need for validation. What's up, baddies? I'm Rima, and you are now tuned in to the Arab and Thriving Show. And today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite topics, and it's why really smart, intelligent, powerful, beautiful, amazing women go for toxic, trash, low-key, narcissistic men. This is a trend that I notice a lot, probably because I've experienced it. And before before I get into my thoughts on why this happens, I want to talk to you about this TED talk that changed my life. It was this woman who I think she went to Harvard. She had worked with Fortune 500 companies. She was just basically the definition of a badass and a victim of abuse for years and years and years. And not just any abuse, like she almost got killed by her husband, her ex-husband. Whenever she would talk to people or anyone knew what situation she was in, they just couldn't believe that somebody of her stature and intelligence and success was in a relationship with a highly abusive person. And she basically goes through all of the steps that an abusive person will do to basically attract their victims. One of the main, main, main things that she, that she points to that I wanna hit on is they convince you that they're the victim. It's so fascinating and so interesting. I mean, it's not like funny. It's not fascinating in a funny way, obviously, but it's just like, I look back on my experience. I was in a toxic, pretty emotionally abusive situationship for like four years. When I would tell my cousin, who's literally like my sister, she's like my older sister, best friend, about my situation, there was a level of kind of judgment, like indirectly, of like, what the hell's wrong with you? Just leave. When I look back on my state of mind during that time, it really didn't feel like I could just leave. Like I knew that I had the agency to leave. And I, I don't know why what's coming to mind is like R. Kelly and how all these people are like, why don't these girls just leave his house? And it's like, y'all don't understand how emotional abuse works. It feels like you can just leave to other people looking in. To that person who is the survivor of abuse, leaving does not feel like an option. The first thing I wanna hit on is validation. I'm honestly, to be real with you, like so grateful that I went through this and that I understood this because it has 110% shape the way that I intend to raise my future daughter. On TikTok, I have a series, which is like the letters to my future daughter. It's kind of my way of healing my inner child and trying to take what I learned the hard way and implement it through thinking about parenting. And one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things that I wanna ingrain in, in all of my kids, but especially my daughters, is not seeking validation outside of themselves. That was something I struggled with. And it's so interesting because I had great parents. And this is another myth that I would love to bust because I think a lot of times when we when we see, especially women, get into these emotionally or even physically abusive relationships or even just attract shitty guys that are like just not doing shit. We always think that they have like daddy issues. And so I always like to say, I have reverse daddy issues. There's still issues, don't get me wrong, but my dad was amazing. Like my dad was like my everything. And it does get to a point where that's kind of toxic too like if you idolize this person so much and you respect him so much and you love him so much you feel so loved by this person but you also are in this addictive cycle of needing them to validate you and i don't i know for a fact my parents never instilled this in me on purpose it was very unintentional but it was instilled in me that his opinion of me was super important and that i could not really develop an opinion of myself that was separate from my dad's opinion of me and thank god my dad was a man of high morals high ethics high dignity that me chasing after his validation never led me to do something crazy but also just training me to seek validation validation from the men that I loved my walking head is like randomly like beeps and it's so weird but anyway training me from a young age to seek validation from the men I love and respect you would think that that should start and end with your father figure but it doesn't it's like a muscle that it creates in you and it latches on to the other men in your life when I was in college I did struggle with self-worth issues and a lot of that has to do with other things like yes me being raised in a family where I had such high expectations on me no matter how much I achieved I always I always paid extra attention to the gap between where I was and where I wanted to be that that's just how my brain works I attribute a lot of my success to that I also attribute a lot of my self-worth issues to just constantly paying attention to what I was lacking. I already had this feeling that I wasn't enough. And so when I was 
dating and talking to guys, I would never let them know that I felt that way because I just like always exuded confidence, exuded self-assurance, right? But in my mind, I always kind of felt like I wasn't good enough. It would put me in these relationships where the person was never going to validate me the way that I needed to be. Like I was constantly wanting this assurance that I was amazing and beautiful and great. And so I would indirectly attract the types of people that would not give that to me because that's what I was actually really used to. It's really logical and I need you to understand this so that you can hopefully disrupt the pattern. So on one hand, I have this muscle that, that was kind of ingrained in me to seek validation from the men I love, right? Let's just put that right here. The other piece is when you think about identity work, it's really crazy, but you attract into your life people that affirm the way that you believe about yourself. Even and especially if you don't want to believe those things about yourself. The subconscious is extremely nuanced and extremely complex. So if I want to believe that I'm amazing and confident and worthy, that's great and all. But internally, subconsciously, if I don't actually believe that, I am going to seek out the people that reaffirm that identity. That is how the ego works. If this seems a little complex for you, I highly recommend Eckhart Tolle. Whether you read the power of now or just listen to his like episodes on super soul sunday or whatever youtube him he talks about the pain body and i'm gonna get a little like deep into this really quick and bring it back because it's super important to understand your pain body is basically your ego or your identity this word ego gets like thrown around in a million different places and I, I think a lot of people don't actually know what it means your ego is just your identity your pain body is the story that you tell yourself about who you are based on some of the traumas or painful experiences that you've had. If you are somebody who was abandoned by your parents as a child, if you don't do that work, I'd imagine that the pain body you hold is people don't actually want me. No one wants me around. People are just going to leave me whenever they need to leave me. I'm not important enough to make people stick around. I'm just like assuming, I'm not trying to project this on anybody, but that would be a reasonable pain body for you to hold based on your experiences. So what happens is even though you don't, nobody wants that to be the case. Come on guys, like who wants to believe that about the world? But because that is the identity that you've built from that experience, your identity, your ego, your pain body, it wants to survive. Think about it like a parasite. It wants to survive at all costs. And the only, only, only way that it can stay alive is if it finds and latches on to stories or experiences or people that reaffirm that it's true. So it's this really, really, really messed up, vicious cycle where if you believe you're not worthy of love because your ex cheated on you, your pain body, if you let it, is going to attract and magnetize more people that prove that that's true, that you're not worthy of love. And it will just keep recreating that story and keep like, it's gonna get, keep, keep getting bigger and bigger. Imagine it like eating this thing up and getting bigger. So it's not gonna go for the good predictable guy because <laughs> that messes up that whole agenda and that whole story because that good predictable guy is gonna make you feel worthy of love and therefore that pain body is gonna get destroyed or start deteriorating little by little once you attract those positive experiences. For me, my pain body is that I need to audition for love. I need to work for love. I come from an immigrant household. If you do too, you feel me? Like bringing home all A's, that's the minimum. Like I, I don't get bonus points for that. So I constantly had to keep doing things and doing things to get what I thought was love. Little did I know my parents loved me no matter what the hell I was doing. Like their love for me wasn't gonna change based on what I was doing, but that's not how it felt. It felt like I got recognition and it felt like I got validation when I performed and did these amazing things, when I won these awards, when I was at the top of my class. So that taught me that I'm not worthy unless I'm going out of my way to try to get that love. I need to chase, chase, chase love. Fast forward my early 20s. I meet this guy who like literally like if you just have one conversation with him it's obvious he's not gonna give me what I need like I knew he wasn't my husband for some reason because of this perfect storm of messed upness of where I was at in life number one needing validation from the men that I loved number two having this pain body that I needed to audition for love I needed to you know constantly do the most to get love and number three and I'm wondering if this resonates with anyone I was in an escapist place in life 
I had just started teaching in Detroit. I was 22, 21. I was 21 years old teaching 16 and 17 year olds, okay? I was highly stressed. Like, I don't know if you can see them. Yeah, you can see them because <laughs> they're popping. I have all this gray hair to prove how stressed I was during that time. This was like my life. Like it was, ex I didn't take it lightly that these kids who are not that much younger than me depend on me to learn. Like that's huge. I never took that lightly at all. So every single day, I was in a state of fight, flight, freeze, all of the above. I was grinding my teeth that night. I was having dreams about like, it was just all bad. I kicked ass, I will say. Felt like I was in this place of like escapism. I needed to escape. So I'm not gonna escape with the guy that's gonna be my future husband. Like that's serious too. So I was wanting to kind of just have a little fling with someone or have a little, have someone to talk to every day. So that perfect storm trifecta of BS basically sent me in a four year long toxic, abusive, emotionally abusive situationship that just chipped away at my confidence during that time I never expected when I met this person for it to last that long why did it last that long why didn't I leave when this person was clearly toxic would tell me like just constantly try to make me insecure like your head is so big for no reason he would sit and tell me I'm insecure like like we didn't even have real conversations I don't even know what I was doing it's so weird I feel like I was so in it because it reaffirmed my identity of needing to chase and chase and chase for love. So it was this dopamine spike. Every time I got him to show me a little bit, it would be like, whoa, this, this addiction thing. And then I would go and chase and chase and chase. And then a little thing of love, whoa. And then in that four years, I literally probably tried to like cut him off multiple times. I lost count of the amount of times I tried to cut him off. The interesting thing, back to the point of the abuser playing victim and convincing you they're the victim. Every time I tried to cut him off, he would come out the gate with something like crazy like he would save his grand gestures for when i would leave okay you probably heard this story before one time when i when he felt like i was serious serious about leaving he shared with me and opened up to me about this story of how he was abused growing up and in the moment i kind of knew what he was doing but i still fell for it like i still fell for this narrative that this boy is just so damaged and hurt and like doesn't know how to love and i'm so confident and come from a great family like all the bs like it's kind of messed up when you think about it it's honestly a little patronizing to him but i'm whole and i, I have so much love to give and maybe he needs me like it was just crazy needless to say i was always this smart I was always this emotionally intelligent. I was always this intuitive. Even throughout that four years of BS, I was still the person people came to for advice. I was still the person that people could depend on when they were going through it. Yet I wasn't applying that to my own life, not because I was not intelligent, but because I was deeply in need of validation. I just want you to understand that if you're going through it, please don't let it make you question how smart you are. Please don't add on to the abuse by thinking you're stupid for making these decisions because that's how I felt. It created so much shame and it actually probably extended the amount of time that I was in it because I couldn't talk to people about it. My cousin who, again, we were always together. I stopped talking to her about it and that's how you know. Like, it's really dangerous when you think about it though because in, if you watch that TED talk, she literally talks about isolation as one of the things that an abuser will do to keep his victim with him or her they'll isolate you from the people that you love and i don't want to say that this guy did that he didn't do that intentionally but i self-isolated from the people that i love because i was ashamed to be in this situation and keep asking for advice and i was that girl that would ask for advice and not take the advice and it just created so much like shame and lack of self-trust so i just want you to know that if you're feeling that way it is a hundred percent normal i know how smart you are I know how discerning you are. And I know deep, deep, deep inside that this is not an intelligence or intellect, whatever issue. This is a self-worth issue. And the only way that you can solve the issue of self-worth is through alone time. You need to cleanse yourself from the need for external validation. That was what did it for me. And mind you, even if you're stuck in it, I'm not gonna be like that person that tells you cut him off right now. That might be really hard for you. I recognize that. Even if you're in stuck in that cycle of being with someone, try to spend one more day alone than you normally would every week. Make up excuses, lie if you need to. Like this is one of the situations where I'm 100% okay with you lying. I ended up creating like a list of rules for myself where it's like, okay, I know I need to like, 
wean off of this thing as if I'm trying to quit smoking because that's really how it felt. Here are the things that I say when he tries to hang out. I say I'm studying for my GMAT. When he starts to notice that I'm, you know, pulling away because I was trying to protect myself from his like huge grand gestures that would ultimately pull me back because I knew emotionally I wasn't strong enough to just cut it. Start spending time alone. I cannot stress this to you enough. You need to be able to hear your thoughts again. You need to distinguish your thoughts from this person's thoughts because you will start to intertwine them the more time you spend in that abusive cycle. Start journaling. Start like taking yourself out on dates. Start doing something consistently on those days where you know you can count on yourself so that you can restore that level of self-trust. It is so, so, so important to try to come back to yourself because once again, this is not an intelligence issue. This is a self-worth issue and nobody, nobody can solve that but you. I love you so much. Like you don't even understand how much I love you. I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending you a big virtual hug. I know you got this. I don't care how many times you have to come back to this video to give yourself that strength and power that you need to move on. I know you're gonna move on. I know you're gonna move on. And it's just gonna be another story that you tell a few years down the line. Let me know if you have any questions or if there are any topics that you want me to cover. I love you so, so, so much and I will see you on the next one.